Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. So it's, it's been a while. So as promised, we're going to make a Ruby video. Now picture this. Picture we have a transaction ID. We have a transaction history table. And I go here. I click on this. So this is what we're going to be building with Ruby. Uh, thank you to the guys at Ruby for helping out me out with this. So I can make this video for you. <laughs> All right. Picture this. You click on that. It adds a record in your wallet transaction. Takes some time, click them, click some time, and then updates with the status of the payment. Now, as you can see, it has updated with the time that this was created. Uh, has updated the status of the payment. Now, what is happening here? What is happening here is that I have a payment API, and when I click on send, it sends some amount, and I add a value. I add the reference and some details about the user in the table. Then we send the details to the bank and other stuff. And then we get back a, a web book. Now, when we get back a web book, it returns the status of the payment. If it has been successful, that then in that case we update our status with successful and some details that come back with the web book. Now, this is possible because of the Rowy web book, right? As you can see, anything that reflects in the dashboard also reflects in Rowy. So, this video does not cover on how to uh, create uh, a Rowy. This stuff in Ruby is only covers on, on web books. We're going to be looking more into Ruby as we move on. So if you want to run more about Ruby, there's a their website. I'm going to link it down below in the description and also a link to their YouTube channel. You can go ahead and check that out. So the the the, the web book that I'm using is this payout web book for from Fincra, a startup fintech from Nigeria. You can use it maybe. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, check this out. So how do we create this? So I have some few things that I've created. So every time you need to create a web book, you click on this and you're going to go ahead and click a new web book and you're going to select basic or whichever one that you need. For my situation, I'm using basic. And when you click on it, you get this link that you can copy and share out with the person who is giving you web books, right? Whoever that's you're using for the web books. I'm going to click on edit here and I'm going to remove whatever that I have first. I'm not really going to remove everything because there's a lot of uh, details here. So we're going to expand this and I'm just going to remove whatever that I had created before so that we can start afresh. Okay. So we're going to look at this with and without the, the code that's written here. So just to see how it looks like. So let me just delete this. I don't know what's up with the uh... right. Delete that. I'm going to um, delete this. I'm going to say return. Delete some things here. And there we go. All right. So drop this and update. So let me now show you how it behaves without that logic. So you click on this, it's going to do a payout, and if you go back to the wallet, it creates two records. So it first creates the first record, which is basically this that has been created right now, and then sends another record, which is the web book. You see, so we have two records, but we don't want two records, we want one record. Now the first one that gets updated is this one with the status of processing. Now this is what we update from our app to Firebase. So the second one comes from the web book. Now, this is the details that come from the workbook with the state of the payment. So, what we want to do with Rowy is listen. We want to check if the transaction ID is equal to the reference we get from the workbook. This reference here that we get back from the workbook. Then, in that case, if it is equal to and the status is equal to successful, we now want to update this one that we added in our application instead of having two records. All right. So that's what we want to do with Rowy. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when you click on this, there's some few things that you're going to notice at the bottom. So we read our code in the parser. So we're going to go down here. You notice we have rec, so we have the record, rec, and the request. So these are the two things that we're going to be using. The reference is referring to these particular rows, uh, columns, or basically with a code for this particular table. So if we want to get the currency, we use ref dot the currency okay so we just say uh ref and the currency that we are going to be using okay so let's go ahead uh and write our web book so uh 
click on this okay, and we're going to go ahead and go to the parser this is where we're going to be writing all our code right so the first thing you're going to do is create a constant that's going to be getting our query so we're going to say constant uh, sorry sorry i got carried away there so we're going to say constant query is equals two now this is an uh, await the synchronous await so we're going to say await we're going to use roe uh sorry rev now this is where rev comes into play we're going to say rev dot where now the where takes three parameters which is the, rec the record we are going to be using which is the transaction id so this is the the row that we are going to be using or rather the field that we are going to be using in our table we're going to say transaction id and then i'm going to say is equals to and then now the rather record is going to be the response that comes back from the the, the webbook and we use rec dot body to get those records we're going to say rec dot body now dot now from there whatever this is just the body that comes with the webbook so this json now from there you need to now check your webbook so our webbook has this so you notice we are trying to get the reference but it's, it's inside the data object so we first have to reach the data object we say dot data and then we also have to reach uh, we also have to reach now the reference so we're just going to copy this reference and you're going to come here and put it dot reference right and then you're going to say dot get at the end so this is just going to make sure we get back our uh, collection details all right now the bottom there we want to go ahead and write our condition so i want to check if the status of the response if the status that we get back is successful so we're going to say if rec dot body dot data dot status so the status i'm getting it from here i want to know if it's successful i'm going to now go ahead and write dot status equals to successful all right so I hope i'm sparing it right i'm not an englishman <laughs> so i can't really all right so if this is equals to successful we want to now write go ahead and write the uh, some details in here i'm just going to go down here and close this so right after we got that now we need to now get the particular uh we now need to go ahead and update the details of whatever that we are we are working on so we want to now update the table of the table which the row which has this uh reference id is equal to this transaction id so we're going to say let's go ahead and say await uh, sorry about that uh, let's do it right you know here let's say uh, wait then we're going to say query all right so the, the query is going to be uh query dot docs all right so now this is going to get that particular row okay, the doc dot now we, now whatever that remains is do the ref dot update all right so it normally looks like this i want this to be inside the update i'm just going to cut all of this and wrap it right about here so if you notice if you notice what's going on here is okay so this is supposed to be inside this if you notice what's going on here is i'm just updating this field. so these are all my fields in this row so we just do the same and updating all of them with the response that comes back from the webbook so i'm just going to remove this return also remove it from here so that now we do rec dot uh, ref dot update which is uh, the json that you're going to be updating and click on save so once you click on save it should now update that particular record when you uh run this so i'm going to delete this delete this delete this all right so now let me run this and let's look at this from the database i hope that has uh, 
actually done uh, done this. So we should get this, and then after we get the webhook, it should update this row with the data that came back from the webhook and the status. So let's wait and see. Now, in case you don't get this working, right? Like for example, you see we have not got the webhook, so it means that there's something wrong with the with the with the code you just wrote. So you can always go back and check what might have gone wrong. So go down here. Let's check where we wrote something wrong. So let's say await ref dot where transaction ID and we will get the status. So query docs ref dot update. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this should just be fine. Yeah, this should be fine. Hold on. Oh yeah, that was fine. I don't know. Yeah, so most of the time there, there are some downtimes with the API or maybe it was, it, the status was failed. So you can just do the same thing if the status was failed. So what you can do, is do the same thing if the status is failed because we have the web payout for the status and also for the for this update so for the status which is failed so we can also do this logic for the failed we can also go to our web <coughs> there so that we can account for both situations so we're going to say if this is equals to failed so copy you can say else, but for my situation, I want to, to use just another if statement so we can be precise. So if we failed, we're just going to do the same thing again. Just going to come down here, update this, and let me run that payout one more time. I'm going to come here, send it. successful go back here should get this and we wait for the status of the payment there we go so it updates successful and that is how you can go ahead and write this so in the next video we're going to be looking at derivatives so the derivatives work somehow similarly so how derivatives work is when something is updated something like this is updated you can perform an action maybe if the uh but the fee is 100 maybe you can update another row or another table in firebase stuff like that but that was it for Roy, and i really appreciate all their support so you can check out their youtube video and their website in the ring description below if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comment section and i'll see you in the next video